um, led by uh, Professor Rochelle Gutierrez. So uh, let me introduce her, and then she will, uh, and the panelists will introduce themselves, or some combination there. But let me give you a, a bit of uh, information about her. So uh, Rochelle is a professor of education at, at uh, Champaign-Urbana. Uh, she's done very important work on the role of intersectionality in teaching and learning of mathematics. And she uh, has uh, rechristened and led this workshop, which is now called uh, Rehumanizing Mathematics for the past, this is our third year. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's our third year. And we're very pleased to have her. And um, thank her very much for putting together this discussion. Wonderful. Can you hear me? I don't think this mic is on. You want to, you want to hear it though? What? Check, check, check. Uh -huh. I literally have to have it like right at my mask. Check, check. Okay. Uh, DJ Wang Rochelle Gutierrez. Yo soy la hija de Rubén Gutierrez y Josefa Pérez de Aguas Calientes y Chihuahua, México. I'm here with you today to welcome you uh, in my ancestral language, Raramuri. Um, and we start with truth and right relations. Um, we've been doing this in our workshop well every time and that is to um, first stop and honor and acknowledge that um, we are on the ancestral and unceded territories of the northern band of the and the Ute nation and these are nations that al although they have been forcefully removed from these lands at some point they've continued to be the original peoples the original stewards and have connections to these lands and continue to will have continue will and continue to have relations with these lands um, and we owe our respect and our honor to them uh, the piece of art that you're seeing here is a uh, wolf by Matt Coyote who is a Ute uh, Indian, or a Ute Nation uh, artist. And if you ever are wondering whose lands you are on when you go to give a talk, you can look at the, the site there. That's uh, nativeland.canada, because Canada has done a much better job than the U.S in thinking about First Nations and the kinds of reparations uh, and the truths that need to be told first before we even think about any kind of reconciliation or right relations. The, uh, the lands that are here that we are honoring are Clayton Peak. This picture was taken while we were on hike. And again, we can think about how our more than human relatives are performing mathematics around us. Who, we, who are we? Uh, we are a group of excited and passionate people who range in backgrounds. Um, we have people who are working with uh, middle school and high school students. We have people who are working with colleges of education, doing teacher education. We have people who are consultants with school districts and with different cities. We have people who are mathematicians in universities and in colleges. Uh, and we just uh, come together all on this journey thinking about how can we think about the truths in mathematics and then getting ourselves into right relations. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as you were entering, maybe you was able to get a index card. If not, um, if at any point during um, this presentation you have a question or you just want to make a little note, maybe come back to it. Um, my fellow um, colleagues who are in the program for me, we have some index cards that we can pass around. So at any point, just raise your hand. You can get an index card and jot that down. We will have time um, at the end. Um, some good chunk of time at the end to ask your questions um, and we'll try to give a response. Does this one work? No. Take that one. Oh, thanks. Can you hear me in the back? All right, great. Um, I am Claudio Jacobo Gomez Gonzalez. Uh, I'm a mathematician at Carleton College. I just started, I've only been there for a year. Um, and first, uh, we're going to kick us off with an individual reflection. Um, you can see the questions here. When has mathematics brought you joy? And when has mathematics brought you pain? Um, we're going to give you all a minute to like individually reflect before we have some like discussions together. Um, and like presumably, uh, we're here because we've like found joy in mathematics, like, presumably. Uh, but at least speaking from my own experience, you know, I know you research mathematicians out there. I know you have some pain with mathematics. So I want you to think about that too. Yeah, I know. Okay, let's do it.
um, yeah, there you go. Um, so now I invite you to uh, turn and talk with the people that, I mean, you've hopefully known each other for at least a week. You're developing some trust, you know, some connections. I want you to share and I want you to see how your like experiences relate to one another. Um, so we're going to give you all five minutes for this one. Um, please go right ahead. Let's share these experiences we're thinking about. seconds. We have about 30 seconds left. Right. 
this? Test, test. There we go. All right, I hate to, uh, these are such vibrant conversations. I'm surprised how much they persisted. That was awesome. Um, I hate to cut you short, um, but I want to hear back from like uh, two or three, you know, just a, a few bounce backs from the audience. Um, we'll have, uh, who's doing it? I can't see over there. Is that you, Chadwick? I can't see. So uh, Chadwick, my, my, uh, one of our illustrious colleagues uh, will be zipping around. Uh, we want to get here from a couple folks. Just share out what, what you discussed. Did anyone want to share anything? Oh, Willie has a mic too? Very good. There we go. Well, for the uh, pain part in my group, uh, it was somebody mentioned the pain of uh, trying to, when you're teaching a mathematics and the, and, the, and the students are experiencing the pain from not, like if, if you have a student from whatever their background is and they're not getting it and then there, tends, there can be like a, a painful like teacher-student relationship thing that happens. Um, that somebody else mentioned it and it really resonated with me. Thank you very much. Let's get one more. Oh, I see one in the back. Corre, corre. Yeah, very, thank you. Um, is it on? Okay, yeah. So our um, joy one was doing mathematics in community when you're able to go, you know, I mean, so I was talking to Mackenzie and like we went to ISERM earlier this summer to work with a group of people and it was like really fun and joyful. And um, a pain thing, I thought that was interesting. I consider myself a research mathematician and you talked like our research like giving us pain and it's like that's not at all my experience. Like even when my research goes badly, it's not as hurtful as the times when I have felt when I was not in community with people. So I've been, you know, at institutions where I felt like really out of place and like really not welcomed. And like those, like when you said like pain, like it was like one specific time where I tried to go to one seminar that got changed times without me being told, like everybody else was told it was going to be at a different time. And I showed up to an empty room and I like literally walked back to my office to cry because like, I just like felt so rejected and so th I thought that that was interesting like I was like there's no way research could hurt me that bad mm, wow thank you for sharing that that's like snap 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 thank you thank you I'm gonna pass back to Rochelle yeah. So part of what our our group has been doing has been thinking about like, okay, universities are talking a lot about diversity and equity and inclusion and in what way is anything that we're doing in our workshop different from that or extending that or in conversation with that, right? So um, I think it's important to think about how we think and talk about our work because it's the language that we use that signals to other people who we are and what kind of conversations we're interested in having. So when we say words like diversity, um, often we just mean like lots of different things, right? There's not really an attention to difference or when difference is used, uh, it's used in a way that n we don't necessarily think about power relations. Uh, in K to 12 schools, we can say, oh yeah, that's a school with a really high level of diversity. When what we really mean is uh, almost 100% black pop student population. So when we say words like that, um, we have to ask ourselves, when we say diversity, are we getting at the difference between groups? Are we getting at the positionality between those groups? When we use words like equity, um, equity often is talking about kind of universalistic approaches, like how do we get everybody on board? How do we do a math for all? How do we get you know, a program that will make everybody feel you know, good about mathematics? And it's often talking about those closing those achievement gaps and getting at the leaky pipelines. And again, uh, from a perspective of critical scholars who think and talk about this work, who theorize this work all the time, we don't just want to have more and different kinds of people in the field. Uh, we don't just want to have more and different kinds of people getting awards in mathematics. We actually want to move beyond this notion of kind of including people. Um, I like to give an example of 
of when we have when we talk about inclusion at a very minimal level we, we kind of are talking about opening that door and like letting one more person kind of get in but if you've ever attended a talk that's a really popular talk and you're one of the last people to get there and someone opens that door for you or you're kind of hanging from the outside and you're trying to see the front of the room that doesn't really feel like inclusion and I know that people feel like they're doing the best they can right there's but there's it's a different perspective to say what if we centered the people who have most been harmed by school systems and what does that look like to place those people those ways of knowing those communities at the core where we dedicate our resources and our energy there and we focus on healing and not just including and that part of that work is having political clarity it means recognizing that a lot of the mathematical knowings both historically or we would say our historically their historically uh, has been erased and some of that means that certain people have gotten credit for contributions whereas maybe it was these ideas were being discovered and performed and celebrated in many different cultures uh, so we just we just encourage you to think about when we use language if you're in a math department meeting or you're somewhere in a space and somebody's talking to you about equity is there a way for you to shift that language to say and when you say equity can you say a little bit more about what you mean rather than just kind of assuming that the other person is in the same place that you are um, we're using a term that's rehumanizing mathematics uh, not because I was really interested in creating new jargon and concepts in our field because I tell you we have lots of them but it was because when I was going around the country and I was meeting with students and meeting with teachers and even just meeting with mathematicians and talking about these ideas the notion of equity didn't really get at it um, it was this idea of there were things that people felt that were kind of these constant either microaggressions or structural aspects that didn't allow people to show up and feel whole to bring all the parts of themselves to the space of doing mathematics so again you may feel like well as a math professor I don't feel like I have encouraged I, that I have microaggressions or I don't feel like the system is against me but maybe there's a way in which you don't bring all of the parts of you to your mathematical spaces because that's kind of just not what's done that you know uh, Ruben Hirsch talks about a front and back of mathematics and we, we get to see the front we don't get to see all the messiness of, of the back so we just say here that rehumanizing mathematics is an act of love that seeks joy and belonging and not just problem solving it's a choice to center those who have suffered most from a Eurocentric and dehumanizing system that erases brilliance. It's a recognition that there are many ways of knowing, which means that there are many knowers and many mathematics. It's a form of political clarity that asks us to follow a different rhythm and to recognize that we are part of a larger time scale than just humans. It's an active refusal to return to normal and it's a step towards restoring both restoring that which has come from from the past restoring that aspect and restoring as in building futures um, in ways that help us be in better relationships with our natural and spiritual worlds and these are the eight dimensions these are the eight dimensions and um, where our projects are going to, as they're talking about their projects they're going to share how these play up, play out in their work but just to give an, an example body and emotions is we think about what's the typical narrative that's written in mathematics and then what's the narrative that we're trying to talk about with restoring so a typical example is well you don't need your body you don't need emotions to do mathematics um, but what we're trying to get at is to recognize even more than just gestures and diagramming um, there are things like intuition and other other aspects that when we actually draw on all of our senses that we can have a fuller version of mathematics and I think some of the terms there you can kind of get a get a sense of cultures and our stories their stories has to do again with all of the different contributions um, around the world including um, the ways it's been uh, documented through ethno mathematics so 
we have these, the, you, you see four stars on this slide and that's because there's four people sitting up here who are amazing stars and doing this work and there are uh, eight other stars wow. who are in the group who we, we need to name. Um, and so we will, after we get done talking about Francis, Cara, Patrick and Claudia, we're gonna wanna include the other people stand up and please say something. But these are the four projects that you're gonna listen to. So thank you. Um, my name is Francis Pina. I teach in Boston Public Schools, um, middle and high school mathematics, and turn my ninth year. Um, so for me entering this um, program, um, I need to kind of reflect a little bit on where I've been. And where I've started has been um, using the CASEL framework for social emotional learning. Um, so in my district, as on the slide, um, we've been given like a package um, to help us um, not only try to reflect and understand our own social emotional learning and needs, but a way to help our students develop that. Um, but what I felt was missing was a way of being proactive about that or proactive about not only the relationships I'm building with students, but the relationships I'm helping my students build with math in my classroom. The social emotional learning has felt like it was an add on. So even with my training, it wasn't through my math department. It wasn't through a math PD by the district. It was something that was an add on or separate. So I would even feel the pressure to truly incorporate it and give it its due. And when I did, it was because of potential harm that I had presented to a student or because of, as something that was mentioned earlier, a student not getting it. And then I am using that, trying to use that toolkit to, to help them process it. But not in a way that I am thinking about, not those deficits or them developing that, but what are the assets that my students are bringing? And not just the assets of their knowledge, but their experience. So for where I'm going um, with this and thinking about rehumanizing mathematics, I'm trying to think about how do I help my students not only like develop metacognition of their mathematical understanding, but to refine it. And what would that look like in the math classroom? How do I have that not only through discussions, um, but through that community that we are building and the discussions they're having with each other that is also highlighting their assets. So my project is about building a year-long portfolio that not only captures the artifacts of their mathematical understanding, reflections and discussions, but also incorporates some art. And art that is not just, oh, here's the, you know, the Fibonacci sequence in squares or um, the golden ratio and they're just coloring it in. Like not a paint by numbers type of approach, mm -hmm. but in a way that challenges aesthetics. I don't want to just highlight, oh, the Pythagorean theorem when there were cultures for centuries already there representing it in their own understanding. 